Donald Trump says he's worth $11 billion. I'm really rich. I'll show you that in a second. But go and look at what he's built, and some questions arise. Trump Plaza. I know the best people, and I'm totally self-funding my campaign. So I don't have to take donors and special interest people and lobbyists. I don't have to bring them in. On how he got so rich, Trump has in the past boasted of his business integrity. I'm 100% clean, he said. The same cannot be said of some of the people he did business with. Trump Plaza, Atlantic City, New Jersey, the site of Donald Trump's foray into the casino business. It ended up in a heap of broken dreams. Trump Plaza closed two years ago. Four of his gambling businesses went bust. Back in 1980, when Trump launched his first casino here, some of his business partners worked for the Mafia. The picture in New York was no better. Here lies Fat Tony Salerno, once one of the most feared men in New York. He was the boss of the Genovese crime family, and it just so happens, the man from whom Donald Trump bought his concrete. Fat Tony and other mobsters had a lock on New York concrete. While most builders use steel and some concrete, Trump built the tallest concrete building in New York. Fat Tony Salerno was fat, <laughs> and he was the head of the Genovese crime family, which was the most powerful crime family in the city at the time. And Fat Tony didn't just supply concrete to Donald Trump. The two men also shared a lawyer, Roy Cohn. Well, the evidence is that uh, uh, Fat Tony Salerno met with Donald Trump in Roy Cohn's office, which makes incredibly logical sense. Not only did I have sources telling me that at the time, but when you consider that he's building the largest concrete structure of its time and the concrete industry is controlled by Fat Tony Salerno, it makes all the sense in the world. In the early 90s, Trump was almost a billion dollars in the red. By 2004, he'd recovered and got into reality TV. You're fired. But here's someone he didn't fire, his business associate, Felix Sater. In 1991 in this bar, Felix Sater had a row with another Wall Street broker. Sater snapped the stem of a margarita glass and stabbed the man in the neck and face. The man had 110 stitches. And Sater, he went to prison. Out of jail, he took part in a $40 million stock market fraud, boosting shares and then selling them at a profit, a pump and dump scam. Then Sater made a deal with the FBI, informing on his fellow fraudsters in the Cosa Nostra. Sater's conviction was publicized, but later, in return for him cooperating with the feds, it was sealed. Sater and Trump got into business together in the early 2000s when Sater was an executive at Bayrock. This is one of three developments that Donald did with Bayrock. From Trump Soho, the name, you would have thought that Trump was the money behind this project. He wasn't. He was only the face. As well as Trump Soho, there were two other projects with Bayrock. Trump Fort Lauderdale in Florida and Trump Camelback in Arizona. When property prices began to slide, the Trump Bayrock projects in Florida and Arizona crashed. Newsnight understands investors lost at least $10 million on the Trump Fort Lauderdale deal alone. I checked out the location in Fort Lauderdale. It was an absolute great location. And I thought with the Trump organization behind it and Mr. Trump, you know, putting his name on the line, I thought it would be very successful. Said everything fine? Everything's good. In 2013, I challenged Trump about his relationship with Felix Sater. Why didn't you go to Felix Sater and say, you're connected with the mafia, you're fired? Well, first of all, we were not the developer there. That was a licensing deal. 
But your name is on it. A very simple licensing deal. Much but your about name's on it, Mr. Trump. Excuse me, but I don't know. You're telling me things that I don't even know about. I mean, you're telling me about Felix Sather. I know who he is. Uh, I know of him, and I know who he is. You stayed in bed, if I may say so, with Felix Sater, and he was connected with the mafia. Again, John, maybe you're thick, but when you have a signed contract, you can't, in this country, just break it. Sometimes we'll sign a deal, and the partner isn't as good as we'd like, but that does happen. And by the way, John, I hate to do this, but I do have that big group of people waiting, so I have to Okay, leave. no, hold on. One last question, please, sir. I have to leave. Um, Thank you. Okay, all right, then. Newsnight has now obtained one of the key Trump Bayrock contracts, which has only recently been unsealed by the courts. And what Trump told me wasn't true. Look at this. It's what's known as a bad boy clause. It states that Bayrock shall do nothing to bring disrepute to or in any manner impair or damage the Trump brand. Sater's convictions were reported by the New York Times in December 2007. The critical question is, before that date, did Trump know about Sater's racketeering past? Here's some evidence Trump could have found when they went into business together. The guilty plea was publicly announced all over the world in a press release put out by the United States Attorney's Office in New York and co-authored by the FBI field office. The press release went all over the world. It was published even in The Guardian. I think it was published in Australia. I'm not sure. It was published in the New York Daily News. There was also issued that same day an indictment against his co-conspirators. And that indictment identified Felix Sater by name as one of the co-conspirators. And that, that was public record. third pointer in 2006 that might have alerted Trump to Sater's past was a lawsuit alleging that he made a death threat against a Trump Bayrock investor. Ernie Menez had bought into Trump Camelback in Arizona. He found out about Sater's past and then he said he got a phone call. The case was later settled, but in the lawsuit, Menez said that Sater threatened to have a man electrically shock Mr. Menez's testicles cut off Mr. Menez's legs and leave Mr. Menez dead in the trunk of his car. Sater's lawyer says this claim was an outright fabrication. Fred Oberlander has acted for clients suing Bayrock. You'd have to be deaf, dumb and blind, in my opinion. The ability of somebody like Donald Trump to know with whom he was doing business and to whom he was selling the right to use his name would certainly include finding the press release and the congressional record where it got put in November 2000. Trump has said he didn't know about Sater's past until December 2007. We do as much of a background check as we can on the principles. I didn't really know him very well. This is tape number one of the videotape deposition of Mr. Donald J. Trump. In the matter Six of months after my interview, he had this to say about Sater. About how many times have you, have you conversed with Mr. Sater? In, in, Over the years? Over the years, if you could ask. Not me. many. Not many. If he were sitting in the room right now, I, I really wouldn't know what he looked like. Okay. Astonishingly, that was three years after Sater had an office in Trump Tower, a Trump email and a business card listing him as a senior advisor to Trump. Mr. Felix Sater. Felix Sater now sees himself as a reformed character. My life has been beyond interesting. My wife says uh, living with me is like reading next week's newspaper today. Oberlander and Lerner say that Sater didn't reveal his convictions to the banks, and so the argument goes. The Trump Bayrock deals are built on bank fraud. His name is still on Trump Soho, which is a Bayrock project, and he's still drawing uh, profits off of that edifice built on fraud. He has a, in my opinion, an ethical obligation at a minimum to disassociate himself from Trump Soho because that project was built on bank fraud. Sater's lawyer told Newsnight that his client will not comment on either Trump or Bayrock. 
adding that Sator is not now, nor has he ever been, mob-connected. So what about Trump's boast that he's 100% clean? Can anyone who did business with the likes of fat Tony Salerno and Felix Sater claim that? Donald Trump cannot wipe clean his brushes with the mob. <laughs>